workshop and today I'm going to show you some of the basics of stand-up paddle boarding. You may have seen it in warmer places like Hawaii or California, but today we're in beautiful Seattle, Washington and I'm going to show you that you can have a great time even in colder waters. So I'm going to go over a couple basics of what you're going to need to go stand-up paddle boarding. Obviously the most important thing is a stand-up paddle board. You'll notice it's really similar in design to a longboard surfboard, but it's going to be a couple feet longer, a little bit wider, and it's also going to be thicker for increased buoyancy. The board we're going to use today is specifically designed for flat water riding and paddling in. Um, it has very little rocker or curvature to the board, whereas if you were riding in waves, you would need that rocker. The second thing you're going to need is a paddle. I prefer a carbon fiber paddle to a wood one because it's much lighter. This one is only, um, it's less than two pounds. They also have increased stiffness for durability, so they're going to last you a really long time. It has a, a 12 degree bend in the design and it has a dihedral shape which is gonna make for maximum efficiency when you're paddling in the water. Now when you're selecting a paddle for purchase, it's really important to get the right size for you. Um, if you're gonna be out riding in small waves, you're gonna want something that's eight inches taller than you, but if you're out paddling around in flat water, you're gonna want something that's 10 inches taller than you. So those are the two main components. And one thing I also really like to have is a carrier because it's hard for me to wrap my arms around the board for carrying it to and from the water. So this carrier here is just going to wrap around the width of the board and then it just clips down on a buckle, cinch it down, and then it also has a carrier spot for your paddle so you can just velcro it right in. This strap goes over your shoulder. So one of the things you want to think about when you're getting ready to go out on the water is uh, you want to pick a day where it's nice and calm, you don't want to see any white caps or have a lot of wind. Um, you also don't want a lot of boat activity because that's going to create chop and make it a little more challenging to balance on the board. There's three different styles of paddling. The first one is going to be prone, which is where you actually lay on the board and use your arms to paddle you around. There's also being on your knees, which is going to be the most stable form of paddling, or standing up, which is why you're doing this. To do this, we have to find the sweet spot on the board. Because you'll notice if you're too far forward, you'll see the nose of the board dipping down into the water. You're going to see water coming up and over. And the same thing's going to happen if you're too far on the back of the board. So. If you're too far back here, you're going to be sinking the tail into the back. So you want to find the sweet spot with your knees. You're going to get on your hands and knees with the paddle perpendicular to the board and use it to stand up one foot at a time. And then slowly stand up. You're going to keep your knees bent and your feet to the sides of the board at all times and that's going to really maximize your balance. By keeping your knees bent, it's also going to engage all your leg muscles, um, so you get a good workout at the same time. Mm -hmm. Alright, once you have your balance down and you're ready to start paddling, you're going to take the paddle, make an OK sign, and wrap it around the T part of the top of the paddle. Then you're going to put your arms out straight away from you, and slowly put the paddle through the water. You're always going to keep this top hand as straight as possible though for maximum efficiency.
When you're ready to switch directions, take your top hand down, replace it with the lower hand, and change sides. Now when you're ready to do a turn, you can either paddle on one side and do a big gradual turn, or you can back paddle. You back paddle from back to front on the right side, it's going to turn you around to the right. And you can combine that with paddling on the left to make a nice tight turn. While you're out paddling, if a boat goes by or you, the wind picks up and you encounter a lot of chops, the best thing to do is to just drop back down to your knees where you're going to be the most stable and then just paddle from your knees until the conditions pass. So you're probably wondering what's going to happen when you fall off the board. Although paddle boarding is really easy to do and it's quick to pick up, even the best athletes are going to fall off at some point. So I'm going to show you how to get back on your board and retrieve your paddle. The nice thing is that the paddles float, so what you can do is leave your paddle in the, in the water, get yourself back to the board, and then go to retrieve your paddle. That way you're not swimming with the paddle in your hand. So when we're ready, we're just going to roll up. is a great way to get not only a lower body and core workout but an upper body workout from all the paddling you're doing as well. It's a great way to cross train if you do other sports that require balance and technique such as running all the way to wakeboarding. Um, it's also a great way just to get out on the water. I hope you enjoyed this video on stand-up paddle boarding. We have lots more available at www.motionboardshop.com and you can also contact us there if you have any questions or need advice on what to get. Thanks!